Hey, Zach Henderson here, and today's video is a deep dive on the kettlebell military press. We're gonna cover the proper kettlebell press form, mobility considerations you'll need to press safely and effectively, and finally, a ton of my favorite kettlebell press variations so that you can get the most out of every kettlebell in your arsenal. Now, of course, the kettlebell press has some unique benefits and techniques that make it different from the barbell or dumbbell press, but the principles and tips that you're gonna learn in this video are going to be applicable to almost any sort of overhead press variation. So what do we mean when we say military press? Well, the general standards include lifting a weight from the shoulders to a straight overhead lockout while keeping strict form, no momentum generated from the legs, and minimal torso lean. Some classic training methods even call for the heels to remain in contact with the toes out in the traditional military attention stance. Nothing works the upper body musculature quite like a kettlebell press. The prime movers are the delts and triceps, and to a lesser degree, the pecs and traps. But the magic of the military press lies in the straight, strict overhead lockout, where you have moved a weight as far as possible from the ground and your own center of gravity. And when that happens, the rest of your body is called upon to help stabilize the weight. The press may be a shoulder exercise on paper, but in practice, everything from your quads, glutes, abs, lats, even your non-pressing arm, and all the way down to your feet, all have a role to play in each and every rep. Now, every strong kettlebell press first starts with a strong kettlebell clean. The clean is how we get a weight from the ground to the shoulder racked position. And when performed correctly, a good clean primes the body and allows the press to happen with ease. Of course, I have a tutorial video on the kettlebell clean, so you're definitely gonna wanna check that out if you haven't already. From here, we'll talk about the four main techniques I like to keep in mind with the kettlebell press technique. Step number one is the zip up technique. So you know how I mentioned that the military press is a full body exercise? Well, this is why. The zip up technique engages every major muscle group from your feet all the way up to your shoulders. And doing so in a sequential order will provide the most stable base and platform from which you will press from. This setup is nearly invisible to the outside eye, but is very important for safety and maximizing your strength. After you clean the kettlebell, grip the ground with your toes while keeping a tripod foot balance. Flex the quads. Think about pulling your kneecaps up towards the hip. Squeeze the glutes as if pinching a penny with the cheeks. Brace the abs as if preparing for a punch to the gut. And tighten the pecs and lats to squeeze the armpit. Now at first, these cues may slow you down and make the press feel unnecessarily difficult. But bear in mind, you don't have to engage with 100% intensity all the time. Enough is enough, and it's totally fine to scale your effort with the amount of weight that you're using. With some practice, you'll be able to run through this internal sequence in less than a second to maximize efficiency and save energy. Step number two is the press itself. So the very last step in the zip up sequence is to really squeeze the kettlebell handle and initiate that press upwards. First things first is to make sure that your wrist is straight. That is bad news. It's very subtle. Second thing is you wanna load the actual weight beneath the pinky, not beneath the thumb, for two reasons. One, the thumb has some slack in it, right? The base of the thumb. The base of the pinky has no slack, it's just bone. Second reason is your radius on your thumb side rotates. 
your ulna does not. Your ulna on your pinky side is a more stable bone to load. So if I was to open my hand, you can kind of see there that the, the main pressure point is on this lower quadrant right there up underneath my pinky. I'm not loading the thumb side, I'm loading the pinky side. And that comes with a slight diagonal. So that way when I press, I'm thinking about pressing through my ulna bone. It's, you know, it's kind of weird. Now don't try to press too fast right off the shoulder, even if you're using a light weight. You want to think about pressing in first gear and then accelerating as you progress through the movement. Your pressing arm will naturally arc out to the side as you pass head height. The forearm should remain vertical to the ground, but don't try to press in a perfectly vertical line. As you approach lockout, the arm will drift back towards the head. Press against the kettlebell with a smooth and even force while maintaining the total body tightness you achieved in step one. Step number three is the overhead lockout. Keep driving the knuckles skyward until the elbow locks out straight. The arm should settle with the bicep lining up right next to the ear. Pause for a few seconds to ensure the arm is stacked and balanced over the shoulder. Actively keep the triceps engaged to keep that arm straight. And finally, step four is the negative. So how you bring the bell back down is just as important as how you put it up. Much like the deadlift, the press feels extra tough on that first rep because it's not preceded by a lowering or eccentric movement. Once we've performed that first press, however, we can use an active negative technique in order to boost strength for the next rep. So what you want to think about is not simply allowing gravity to have the weight fall back, but rather squeeze tight and pull the kettlebell back down to that rack position. So you'll be co-contracting all the musculature around your arms, pecs, lats, and shoulder. This technique essentially winds you up and allows you to launch right back into the next rep. So in this way, it's kind of a continuation of the zip up idea. Now, before we move on from kettlebell press technique, there are three more subtle details that will really help you to refine your press. Number one is your stance because total body engagement begins at the feet. Now, of course, we have to clean the kettlebell before we press it, and that necessitates a somewhat wide sumo stance that is necessary to have the weight pass between the legs. The only problem is that stance is typically a bit too wide to maximize the stability that we could otherwise get from the legs and the hips. So in general, I recommend after you finish the clean rep to quickly bring the feet in, usually just a few inches. Now, of course, some people will clean and move their feet at the same time, but whatever works, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you reestablish a more narrow and more stable foot position. Number two is breathing. And of course, we know the breath has a huge impact on strength performance. So here are some basic breathing guidelines, and of course they will differ depending on how much weight you're lifting. So I recommend breathing in through the nose during the zip up technique, holding the breath as you initiate the press, and then the exhalation comes with the exertion, and that's gonna depend on the weight that you're using. For easy reps, I suggest a smooth nasal exhalation through the press. For more challenging reps, I recommend exhaling through the mouth as if you are blowing out birthday cake candles. Now for heavy weights or finishing out that last tough rep of a set, you're gonna wanna use a power exhalation. And this is where you put the tongue on the roof of your mouth and you make a hissing sound and this is going to help to pressurize and brace the abs 
that's gonna help you grind out that heavy rep or that last rep when you're feeling a little extra fatigued. No matter how tough it was to press the kettlebell, you're gonna to wanna to take a few seconds at the top to pause motionless and take another breath in. In general, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a belly full of air through the negative, again, just to help keep the abs braced and shoulders stable. And number three is eye position. So much like how your breathing can have a big impact on your strength performance, so can where you look with the eyes. Now for easy reps, probably doesn't make too much of a difference. I would just suggest keeping your eyes on the horizon or looking slightly up. But for more challenging reps, you can take advantage of the flexion extension response in order to move a hefty weight. As a general rule, looking down promotes a flexion response while looking up does the same for extension. As it applies to the press, a downward gaze helps with shoulder flexion, which boosts your strength as the kettlebell moves off of the shoulder. And an upward gaze drives extension, helping you to plow through sticking points all the way to a strong lockout. An easy way to take advantage of these reflexes with appropriate timing is to simply keep your eyes on the kettlebell during the press. Now, once the bell has been locked out overhead, you're gonna to wanna to bring your gaze back down to neutral this is just gonna help you keep your balance and keep your eyes there until you have safely brought the weight back to the rack position. So let's talk mobility for the military press. And let me state the obvious. You need some decent shoulder mobility in order to safely press a weight overhead. But we're not just looking at the shoulders here. We really have to consider the role of the hips, core, T-spine, and shoulders all working together in order to facilitate a strong overhead military press. Now, between long hours of sitting combined with hard physical training, most of us have some sort of tightness in the hips and shoulders. So just a little warm up and prep can go a long way. So with that, here are some of my favorite drills that check a lot of boxes that I highly encourage you to incorporate into your pressing warm-up routine. First up are half kneeling banded shoulder dislocates and around the world circles. These circle patterns have long been used by Olympic weightlifters to loosen up the shoulders. Pulling out against the band turns this into an active stretch, requiring strength in awkward positions. The half kneeling position also gives you a great hip flexor and quad stretch. Just be sure to keep the downside glute tight with a slight tailbone tuck. Next up is a simple side plank where we integrate some shoulder movement. Strong shoulders can only exist on top of a strong core. Remember the synergy that comes with every muscle group supporting its neighbors? Well, the obliques run along the sides of the body and together with the lats, provide our lateral stability and support upright posture. Waking up the obliques with a side plank is a simple way to boost shoulder function. Next up, we have weighted dead bugs. Now, the classic dead bug is a great way to train the integration of shoulder movement with core stability. And of course, there's the added benefit of coordinating with the hips as well. Like the side plank variation above, focus on keeping a stiff core to prevent unnecessary spinal movement while dynamically moving the limbs. Last up is my all-time favorite stretch, and that is the bretzel. Much like our first opener, this drill hits the shoulders and the hips simultaneously. The bretzel boosts shoulder mobility, not just by stretching out the pecs and the biceps, but through thoracic spine rotation. Our shoulder blades live in the T-spine area, and naturally, if the T-spine is stiff or immobile, the shoulders are doomed to the same. Hold each side for two to three minutes, relax the shoulders down to the ground with each long exhale. Now what all of these mobility drills have in common is a focus on shoulder control in concert with the rest of the body. 
We're not isolating parts here, we're integrating them. And that's really what the press is all about. Now let's take a look at some top kettlebell press variations. First up is the double kettlebell press. All the same clean and press techniques apply when using double bells. Just note that pressing two bells at once will eliminate the subtle side lean that you enjoy when pressing one bell at a time. And though you may lean back slightly, the double press does typically require more mobility through both of the shoulders. Next up is the seesaw press. This double kettlebell press involves equal but opposite movement through the arms. Begin by cleaning two kettlebells and press just one overhead. As the top arm comes down, begin to press up with the other. Move each arm at the same controlled speed and they should meet at the same level right around the top of the head. One of my favorite kettlebell exercises is the bottoms up press. Instead of having the kettlebell rest on the back of the arm, the bell is held upside down with the bottom base facing skyward. The bottoms up press creates extra long leverage with the weight and introduces a balance component into the press. These taken together require more grip strength and rotator cuff stability than a traditional press. For the suitcase press, you'll press as usual while holding another kettlebell, usually heavier, down by your side. The extra weight will challenge your core stability and your shoulder independence. Clean your press bell before carefully deadlifting the other. In the Liberty Press, you will hold a kettlebell statically overhead with one arm while dynamically pressing with the other. Clean two bells, press one side up and hold it there. Really focus on keeping that arm straight with hard triceps. Press the other side for reps as usual. Now we know that as a full body lift, the press begins at the feet. And that stability and rootedness that we get from the ground influences everything up the kinetic chain. And it's for this simple reason that any change in foot or leg position will affect the press itself. The half kneeling position removes much of your lower body stability and thus increases the demands on the glutes and core. The single arm version can be performed with either arm but is traditionally trained on the high knee side for more direct carryover to the Turkish getup. And here with the Z press, we take the legs completely out of the equation by sitting directly on the ground in a wide split stance. Keep the glutes and abs tight to support an upright posture and resist any lean back. As you can tell, the press can be performed in many dozens of ways. And the press pattern itself offers more variation than almost any other main lift. And that does it for today. If you would like to take your kettlebell training to the next level, be sure to check the description for links to some of my flagship kettlebell programs and courses. Of course, wishing you all the best in your training, and we'll see you in the next video.